So how do you know if you're an accredited investor and why should you even care? So if you're an accredited investor, basically it means that you have a certain net worth or certain income. If you're single, it means you make about $200,000 a year or you're worth about $1 million net worth without including your primary home. If you're married, you could actually make $300,000 as a couple and still qualify as an accredited investor. And if you are an accredited investor, it means that you could invest in a lot of things that might not be open to people who are not accredited investors. For example, if you want to invest in a lot of real estate syndications, many of these will only let accredited investors invest into the deals. The funny thing about the term accredited investor is that it was first put into the law in the early 1980s, and it really hasn't changed since then. The only major change was in 2011 after the financial crisis where they actually added that part where you cannot include the worth of your primary home in your net worth calculations. The reason why I bring this up is that $200,000 of income in the 1980s means something totally different now. If you adjusted for inflation, your income would have to be $650,000 to mean what 200K did in the 1980s. So the net effect is that more and more people can invest into these kinds of deals that only accept accredited investors. And you could look at this in one of two ways. You could say, this is awesome. More people can now invest into deals that typically have higher returns than the stock market. Or you could say, wow, this is really bad because a lot of more people have access to these riskier deals and are risking more of their capital than they used to. So that's basically it. Accredited investors have a certain net worth or income, and they have access to invest into all sorts of deals that they might not if they were not accredited investors. I'm Dan the Darwinian Doctor. I'm a urologic surgeon, real estate investor. Follow for more.